knee joint is a synovial joint. And the type of the synovial joint is a modified hinge joint. And I explain what it means. Okay, so let's go with the osteology of the joint. So on this side, you can see the femur, and this is tibia. I'm going to put the tibia aside. Let's go with the femur. On the femoral side, we have the medial and lateral condyles. This is medial condyle of the femur. This is lateral condyle of the femur. And in between these two, on the anterior side here, we have the patellar surface. That patellar surface articulates with patella. Okay? And also on the posterior side, we have this notch and also bottom part is fossa, intercondylar fossa, that it holds the crochet ligaments of the knee joint, which are located inside the knee joint. Okay, on the tibial side, we have the medial, this is medial condyle, and lateral condyle. If I hold it like that, hopefully we can see the superior surface of the, of the condyles right here, relatively flat, known as plateau. And then between these two, we have intercondylar eminence. Then the femoral condyles articulate with these plateau. Okay? Now, the joint, I'm going to actually show you another bone that I have here, right here. The joint has three compartments. The medial tibiofemoral right here, the lateral tibiofemoral, and right here, patellofemoral joint. This patellofemoral between patella and femur is a synovial planar joint. Then it has just gliding and a sliding movements. However, the medial tibiofemoral and lateral tibiofemoral these two compartments, they can actually have the flexion extension and rotation movements of the knee joint. That's why the knee joint is a synovial modified hinge joint. Good to know that on the lateral side here, we have the fibula, but fibula doesn't contribute in the formation of the, or uh, form, uh, formation of the, of the knee joint. In this shot, we want to walk you through the, uh, the menisci inside the knee joint. So that is the anterior view of the knee joint. Here is the patella, the patella ligament, and quadriceps tendon. Okay, so if I reflect the patella, we can look at inside the joint, and of course that is the articular surface of the patella. Now, uh, the joint is being completely open, and then I'm going to turn in to show you the the menisci inside the inside the joint. Remember, that is the anterior side and that is posterior. This side is lateral and this side is medial. Okay? For orientation. Now, menisci are um, pieces of the or crescent shape fibrocartilage structure that located between the articular surfaces and they increase the congruency of the articular surfaces. Congruency refers to adaptability between the articular surfaces. The femoral condyles are kind of round, but tibial plateau are kind of flat. They also um, act as the shock absorber inside the, inside the knee joint. Now, the, each meniscus has anterior posterior end right here, or horn, so then these horns attach in the intercondylar areas of the tibia. The anterior horns of the menisci are attached to each other by this ligament, transverse ligament of the knee. Inferiorly, they attach to the condyles. But then on the peripheral side, the lateral meniscus is separated from the joint capsule by the tendon of popliteus muscle, which is right here. That is the tendon of popliteus muscle. And this is the lateral collateral ligament. But on the medial side, the, uh, the meniscus attaches to the joint capsule. And that is the thickening of joint capsule, which is uh, medial collateral ligament. Okay? Now, 
Um, again, just remind you that inside the joint, uh, we do have crochet ligaments, that the joint has been opened and the crochet ligament are been, um, have been cut. Knee joint is the largest synovial joint in human body. And as the largest synovial joint in human body, you can imagine that it needs to be supported by several ligaments. So let's go through the ligaments that support the joint. Again, of course, this anterior uh, view, patella and patella ligament. And then we open the joint. Actually, let's go with the sides first, then we go with the ligaments inside the joint. Okay, again, orientation, lateral side, because it's fibula, and this is medial side. On the lateral side, we have a ligament, which is known as lateral collateral ligament, or fibular collateral ligament, right there. This ligament is a stretch between the lateral epicondyle of the femur to the head of the fibula. Now, as you can see, the ligament is, is separated from the meniscus. This is lateral meniscus that we have already seen right there. It's separated from the lateral meniscus by this structure right there, um, right here. That is the tendon of popliteus muscle. Then the tendon of popliteus muscle separates the lateral meniscus from lateral collateral ligament. So then in that sense, the lateral collateral ligament, uh, sorry, the lateral meniscus is a little bit more mobile than medial meniscus when we move the knee joint, okay, is more mobile. Now, the popliteus muscle, that's the tendon, if tendon of the muscle, if um, I do have another specimen that I can show you here that shows the whole muscle, is a little bit older specimen, by the way, so that is a tendon of muscle. And that is the muscle right here, all the way down, comes all the way down, and attaches to the tibia above the surial line. Okay, that's really important muscle in regards to the physiology of the knee joint that um, unlocks the knee joint by doing the medial rotation at the knee joint. Okay, when we say unlock, uh, good to know when the knee joint is extended, it is locked, but when it is flexed, um, is kind of unlocked, then we can have a little bit medial rotation at the knee joint. Okay. Now, that was ACL or, um, sorry, LCL or lateral collateral ligament. On the medial side, we have this ligament, which is called medial collateral ligament, is a stretch, or tibial collateral ligament, is a stretch between the medial femoral epicondyle of the femur to the upper medial tibia. This ligament does attach to the medial meniscus. You see that? It attaches to the medial meniscus. Okay, so these are the collateral ligaments that provide the side-to-side -side stability to the knee joint. Okay, side-to-side -side stability. Okay, so when the, when if you want to move the joint side-to-side, -side, these ligaments provide the stability. Now, inside the knee joint, we have crochet ligaments. Hopefully you can imagine that's the anterior view of the flexed joint. Okay, so that is anterior crochet ligament or ACL. As you can see, it is attached to the anterior intercondylar area of the tibia. Goes all the way back and superiorly and attached to the lateral femoral condyle on the medial aspect. ACL. Okay, then on the posterior side, we have posterior crochet ligament right here, which is a stretch between the posterior intercondylar area right here, and then on the, it goes all the way anteriorly and attaches to the medial femoral condyle on the medial aspect. So the, and the posterior and anterior crochet ligaments provide the anterior posterior stability to the knee joint. So if I flex the knee joint and if I actually move the tibia anterior posteriorly, these are the crochet ligaments that prevent from those movements. Okay, there are other supporting structures here that I would like to walk you through. One of them is this, which is the, is the ligament stretched between the posterior crochet ligament or PCL 
and lateral meniscus, that is meniscofemoral ligament, okay? And also on the posterior, so on the anterior side, this is structure that attaches to the girdish tubercle of the tibia here, and it comes from thigh. This is IT band, or iliotibial band, or iliotibial tract. So this structure is the thickening of the deep fascia comes from the thigh. And uh, this actually um, band gives attachment to the muscle on the top part. So then when you reinforce the muscle, you are supporting the knee joint of your patient. Okay, so then these are the supporting the structures of the knee joint. Also, on the medial side, we have the tendon of three muscles, that is pes anserine tendon, okay, um, from three muscles um, coming from thigh, that's uh, when they are coming down, they support the medial aspect of the, of the knee joint. When it comes to the movements of the knee joint, <coughs> because the joint is a modified hinge joint, uh, we have um, actually um, two types of movements. One is flexion extension, that's flexion, that is extension. But as, as I mentioned before, when the joint is locked, then when the joint is extended, it is locked, then it cannot rotate. However, when I flex the joint, the ligaments are a little bit loose, and then the joint can do medial lateral rotation. So as you can see, I'm not um, easily we can do the lateral medial rotation, but that is the fibula, then that is medial rotation, and that is lateral rotation. Okay, rotation of the knee joint. And because um, it can do uh, flexion, extension, and rotation, a little bit circumduction is also um, doable um, in, the, in the knee joint.